Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My, my, my. I want us this morning, I've got a couple of scriptures I want to read before we get into the meat of our message, but I said something last Sunday morning and really didn't think much about it, just said it in passing, but this week, and I really thought the Lord was leading in another direction, and I already started on a sermon that we might get to next week or we may never get to, but anyway, as I walked around these pews and as I prayed for each one of you this week and I uh, come up here and stood behind this pulpit and prayed for the Lord to give me what He would have me to give to you. Because unless He gives it to me, what I give you is not really of a great importance. Amen? It, it doesn't have any eternal impact. It might help you a little bit, but not like it does if the Lord gives it to us. Amen? I want to read Zechariah 4 and 10. You can go there if you want to, but we're, our main text is going to be in Matthew the 14th chapter, but... I want to give you Zechariah 4 and 10. And I wasn't texting a while ago. If you saw me with my cell phone, I was looking up a scripture on the Bible that's on there. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. Boy, isn't that wonderful? Amen. Have a Bible right in your pocket all the time. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful Surely. for that. Amen. The Word of God says in Zechariah 4 and 10, For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. Then answered I and said unto him, Where are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side? Now you remember we talked about that not too long ago. But the, script, the part of that scripture I want you to think about this morning, I want you to see is the first part of the 10th verse. You do remember us talking about the two candlesticks, don't you? Amen. How that their source was from the olive trees. They were, It was a supernatural source. How that they the, the supply for, was supplied by the Lord and not by man. Amen. Amen. But I want you to see there where it says, For who hath despised the day of small things? Amen. We don't think much of small things. Amen? But if you'll search throughout the Word of God, you will find that the Lord puts a lot of stock in small things. Amen? You will find that many times, more times than not, He's on the side of the underdog. Amen? Amen? How the small dog in the fight? Amen? So who hath despised the day of small things? Not the Lord, that's for sure. Man has, amen? Man seems to think that it has to be some overblown big thing going on or it don't amount to a hill of beans, amen? But God does not despise small things. As a matter of fact, He works through, more times than not, He works through small things rather than He does the big things, amen? We find over in Matthew, the second chapter and the sixth verse, we're going to go to Matthew 14 here in a minute, but Matthew, the sixth chapter, Chapter, I mean the uh, second chapter and the sixth verse. We talk, we hear him talking about another small thing. It says, "And thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel." Now he's talking about the birth of our Savior, amen, the Messiah, hallelujah, that was to come. Yeah. And he said, I know that you're a small place, Bethlehem, oh. amen, oh. but out of this small place, I'm going to do a great thing, amen, yeah. hallelujah. The Lord shall give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive. She will bring forth a man-child. She will call his name Emmanuel. And guess where this is going to take place? In the palace? Oh, no. Oh. In the biggest city in all of the, the country, in the greatest, in the most uh, illustrious city in the area, no, it's going to take place in little old Bethlehem. Amen. Amen. They would they would say about Jesus one time. They would say, "Can anything good come out of Nazareth?" Amen. So he even lived in a small, despised place. Amen. Wow. He grew up in one that wasn't looked upon favorably, wow. probably right. on the wrong side of the tracks for some of the for all of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But we see here that God is going to bring forth His Son. Not out of a palace, but out of a stable. Not out of a, of a, of a big city, but out of Bethlehem. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. So we see that God does not despise small things. He oh, takes wow. great pleasure in using small things. Amen? Amen? Right. Little is much when wow. God is in it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I could get happy this morning. Oh, I'm already happy. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew 14 and 15. 
I want to talk to you about something else small that God used. See, you may think that you're insignificant. You may think that you're not important in the whole scope of things. You may think that our church, because it's small, well, it just doesn't rank up there with the big boys. Mm. Well, let's see what God can do with small things right. when they're put into His hands. Amen. Amen. I made the statement last week that I want to go a little deeper into. Not the direction that I thought it was going to go, but we're going to go the way the Lord leads. Amen. Amen. Many times people use the excuse that they can't do much, so they don't do nothing. Yeah. Many times people use the excuse that they can't give much, mm. so they don't give nothing. Amen? Why? Because man puts very little premium on small things. Right. We don't think much about small things, Brother Sleaze. We Many, many, many times, more times than not, we walk right past the small things mm -hmm. looking for the big sign. Yeah. Amen? Right. Looking for something bigger that God has. Amen. When He wants us to stop and take the time to look at the small things that He works through. Amen? Yeah. Let's see what happens here. Matthew 14 and 15, we find the Lord and He's got a great following. He's been teaching and they've been following Him. And they're out in the desert. And it says, And when it was evening, His disciples came to Him saying, This is a desert place. And the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the village, villages and buy themselves victuals. In other words, it's supper time. They're getting hungry, and we don't have nothing to feed them. Amen? Amen. And Jesus said, they need not depart. Give ye them to eat. Listen to the disciples' reply. And they say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. That's all we got. That ain't enough. Lord, can't you see there's 5,000 men out here, not counting the women and the children, and yeah. we've got this little, we got these few fish, we got these few loaves, we can't feed these people. Now the book of John puts it this way. Stay there in Matthew because we're going to come right back. The book of John records this, and this is what John says about it. Philip answered him and said, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. Meaning, Lord, this is all we got, but even if we had 200 penny worth of bread, that still wouldn't be enough. In other words, we can have a truckload, and it ain't going to feed this pe these people here. It's yeah. going to take more than we've got. Amen? Amen. We don't have but a little. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. We don't have enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. But one of the disciples said, I'm still reading in John, but hold your place. We're coming back to 14 and 18 in a minute in Matthew. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Now can you imagine today, can you imagine this little boy as he walked the path or maybe he was out on his own just wandering the hillside or maybe he was with one of the maybe he was one of the sons of the 5,000 that was there. Either way, he's walking around with his lunch bucket Amen. Amen. People as far as the eye could see. And inside of there, he's got what? Not even two big fish. Yeah. Two small fishes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Two little fishes. Mm -hmm. Sound like the kind I used to catch when I went fishing. Two small fishes. Amen. And five barley loaves. Now that might have been for him and his sister and mom and dad or something. Or it may just been something, you know, it may just been his stock. I don't know. But he's packing that around. That's all they can find. Yeah. Now, unless the disciples took it from him forcefully and said, hey, he's got something, take it away from him, let's see what it is. More than likely, this little boy offered what he had. <laughs> Can I preach this morning? Yeah. Amen. 5,000 people out there. They're hungry. It's supper time. Yeah. Lord, I don't have much. Yeah. Ooh, hallelujah. I don't have much. But what I've got, you can have. Yeah. You can have it. Amen. Yeah. I got a little bit. You can have it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I can run this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't have very much. Yeah. But what I got, you can have. Oh, how he longs to hear us say that this morning. Yeah. Oh Lord, I ain't got much. I know I'm not much, but everything that I am, everything that I'm not, everything that I have, everything that I ain't got, I give to you this morning. Hallelujah. But no, we spend too much time going around saying, I don't have anything. I 
can't do anything. I can't give him anything. He wants what you got even if it's little. He doesn't despise small things. He wants you. You may feel like the least of the least. He wants you. He wants you. And this little boy says, well, here, I've got this. And you know what Jesus says? Oh, my, my, my. We're back in Matthew 14 and 18. And listen, he was probably told by some of the people yeah. when he said, Brother Sleece, when he said, I've got this. Mm -hmm. And they looked in there, they probably said, <laughs> are, you, are you kidding me? Yeah. Five loaves and two little, look at them puny fish. Yeah. And we got 5,000 people out here that ain't going to help nobody. Yeah. Amen. So he was, how many times you ever felt like people looked at you like that? Yeah. You ain't nothing. Yeah. You can't contribute. Yeah. You don't have nothing to offer. Amen. That's just a small thing. Thank God today he uses small things. Amen. 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 The Lord doesn't despise small things. Mm -hmm. yes. Let's see what happens. Oh, Jesus said in verse 18, Matthew 14, 18, He said, bring them hither to me. When Jesus said, give it to me. Oh, that's what He's saying to you today. Amen. As you sit in your little corner and say, I can't do nothing. God's saying, give me your nothing so that I can make something out of it. I can't give much. God said, give your little so that I can increase it. Oh, hallelujah. Whether it's your strength, whether it's your talent, whether it's your money, whether it's your household, whether it's your family, give them to me. Yeah. Give them to me. Oh, my Lord. Bring them hither to me. Let's see what happens. Verse 19. And He commanded the multitude to sit down. The disciples, they're still thinking, what's He doing? Yeah. We've seen what the lad had. We've seen the little boy in his picnic lunch. Mm -hmm. That wasn't enough for his own family, let alone enough for all these people. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, bring them hither to me. Oh, my Lord. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes. Mm -hmm. Now, unless he held them all up into his hands, he'd have to have five loaves and two fishes all. More than likely, the basket that the little boy had the had the meal in, whatever he carried it in, he probably lifted it up like this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> kind of reminds me of the woman with the meal barrel on the crucible. She had the crucible. Amen. Yeah. Brother Dave, he lifts it up. Right. And he blesses it, the Bible says. Amen. Amen. What does it say? Bring them hither to me. He told them to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the fishes. Looking up to heaven, he blessed it. Then he began to break it. Amen. Right. Then he began to break it. Right. And he broke off a piece. Right. And he gave it to his disciples. Right. And his disciples would give it to the people. Amen. And the more they gave, the more Jesus kept pulling out of the basket. All right. But there was just a little. I looked in that basket. Peter probably thought, Thomas for sure thought, I don't believe this. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thomas for sure thought, I don't believe this. Yeah. Yeah. I looked in that basket. Yeah. Oh, I know there wasn't five loaves and two little and two little fishes. What's he doing? Honey, I got news for you this morning. God wants us to know that when we give him little things and they go into the master's hands, they become big things. And he can use those. And not only is it enough, but it's more than enough this morning. Amen. Your little is more than enough if you'll put it in the hands of the Savior. Amen. Listen to me. If the lad had have said, well, here, Here's my two fish. Here, Daddy. Here. I don't know who you are, but here you can have a piece. It wouldn't have been enough. But when he put it into the hands of the Master, oh, are you getting that this morning? When he put it into the hands of Jesus, little became much. When you do that with your talent, when you do that with your strength, when you do that with your money, Whatever it is, little is much Amen. when God is in it. Let's see what happened. 
He took, He blessed it. Looking up to heaven, He blessed it and He broke it. And He gave the loaves to His disciples and the disciples gave to the multitude, the Bible says. And you see what happens here? In the hands of the lad of the disciples, it wasn't enough. But in the hands of the Master, with Him all things are possible. Amen. They gave it to Jesus. Jesus blessed it. Broke it. Gave it to the disciples. And the disciples gave it to the people. That's why I stand up here today and tell you that I can't give you anything that will sustain you unless He gives it to me to give to you. Amen. Amen. Listen, I've been preaching for 27 years. I've preached thousands of sermons. I've got notes that would stack up this high. And I could go back and preach. And we, we do go back and preach when the Lord leads us to. But if I just decided this week I'm not going to study no more, I'm not going to pray no more, I'm just going to give the people what God's already gave me years ago, and I'm just going to give them because I've learned some things and I know a little bit about the Bible. I've been reading it since I was five years old. I'm certainly not a scholar, but I'm a student of the Bible. I can tell them some things and try and teach them some, some things without Him. And if I did that, it would not be enough. It would not sustain you. It would not be sufficient because little in my hand stays little. But the minute we transfer it over to the hands of the Master, Brother Sleese, little becomes big. Little becomes big. It becomes much in the hands of the Savior. Amen. Oh, my goodness. You say today, oh, well, I have talent. I can just entertain the people. Yeah, that's all you'll do without giving it to God first, right. allowing Him to bless it, and then, get, then Him giving it back to you. And you've given it to the people then. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Here I am, Lord. Everything that I am, everything that I'm not. Put it in the hands of the Savior and He'll bless you. He'll bless you. Amen. That's sort of how I came to church this morning. The last two days I've been hardly been able to get up. And, I, I could get up, but I have to stand and hold on till the pain leaves enough to where I start putting one foot in front of the other. And I told the Lord last night, I said, Lord, I, I know that your strength, that my, yeah, that your strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Amen. I'm weak. I've been in pain. Yes. But I'm going to go in the morning and I'm going to offer you what I've got. I may have to limp into church. I may have to drag one leg behind me. But I'm going to offer my little because I know in the hands of the Master little Amen. is much True. when God is in it. Yes, sir. Little is much when God is in it. Exactly. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. My, my, my. Some people might look at this church and think, been there seven years, huh? When you don't close down. You're small. You ain't got a whole lot of people. I don't see a lot of things going on. Like we, yeah, when the Master says to, that's Him. Amen. Amen. Because little is much when God is in it. Yeah. Amen. Little is much when God Amen. is in it. Do not despise small things today. Amen. Right. Listen. Verse 20. And they did all eat and were filled. They all didn't just get a little crumb. And think, well, you know, that's just... How many people ever had a bite of something and all that did is make you more hungry? Yeah. Amen. But that ain't what happens here. Remember, two small fish and five barley loaves. Mm. They did all eat and were filled. Yes. Well, glory to God. What do you think about that? <laughs> Hallelujah. And then, somebody say, and then, and then, they took up the fragments that remained, twelve basketfuls. Did you hear that? Amen. That little basket that the boy had with the fishes and the loaves, that when they looked at it, they thought, Phew, that ain't piddly mess. That ain't going to amount to nothing. Suddenly has fed 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. Not only that, you see, when God does something, He does something. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You don't get to it and think, well, I'll tell you what, Lord. You just barely, that was barely enough for us. Amen. <laughs> it said that they picked up of the fragments 12 basket full. Amen. Oh. And the people had eaten and been full. The people had eaten till they were full. Right. And then there was still 12 baskets. 
baskets remaining. I'm here to tell you this morning that you may not have much. You may think it's little, but if you give it to Him, hallelujah, little is much when God is in it. A little lad with a picnic lunch fed 5,000, not counting the women and children. There were 12 basketfuls left over. Why? Because he didn't look at what he had and say, well, it ain't going to help nobody. Yeah. That ain't enough. Oh. That's what we do. I can't help nobody. I don't have anything to give. I don't have enough to give. No, he said, Lord, I know it ain't much. I've been told it ain't much. I've had people tell me, well, you're just bugging us. That ain't enough. That's silly. Amen? But Lord, if you'll take it, it's yours. This little boy was hungry too. Amen. This little boy, it was time to eat. This little boy was hungry. He said, well, you know, his stomach probably growling. How many times have we devoured what little we had? Because our own flesh craved it. Right. Instead of putting it into the hands of the Lord and allowing Him to use it. Right. Really. Amen. Hey, it happens all the time with people's tithes and offerings. Right. Yeah. Can't afford to. Yeah. Don't have enough. Yeah. Oh, it'd be enough if you give it to Him. Yeah. Amen. Right. So he's like, well, I'm hungry. There's so many people. And I've been told this ain't much. But I've also heard about this Jesus. Who knows? Who knows if he... Oh, child's faith is great, ain't it? Amen. Who knows if he can't take this? Yeah. And it'd be more than enough. Mm -hmm. Right. He believed in... He believed in... He, oh, yeah. You come to me as you children. come to him as children. Yeah, there it is. Amen. I, I, I believe he can do something with it. Yeah. Why, why don't we... Because we don't believe He can. Right. Amen? No. Why don't we give? Well, because I don't have it. No, because you don't believe His Word. Amen. Because He said it is more blessed to give yes, than it is to receive. receive. And if you give, men will give unto you. Amen? Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Right. He said if you'll bring your tithes and your offering into the storehouse, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out. But you don't believe that. Come on. We don't believe that. We don't believe that God can use little things. If we did, we'd be more than willing to give it to Him. Oh, yeah. So it's a lack of faith. This little boy didn't have that lack of oh, faith. That's right. Even when the naysayer said, get on out of here, kid. Go play or something. Yeah. Take you, take that little measly, that two-piece fish and more you got with you and go sit down under the shade tree and eat it. Amen. Yeah. But he said, if you'll take it, Oh, Jesus, here it is. If you if you want it, you can have it. Oh, that's what He wants you to say this morning. He wants Sister Amy to say, I know I ain't much. I know I don't got much. But what I got, Lord, you, oh, you can have it. Amen. He wants Brother David to say, Lord, I ain't got much. Oh, I ain't considered much by most people. But what I got, you can have it this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord, I feel a Mike Housley spell coming on. Somebody tell me what his name is. His name is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 He's more than enough. And what you've got may be little in your own hands, but give it to God and He'll make it big. Right. Whew. Hallelujah. All of them were filled. Yeah. Amen. True. Little as much when God is in it. You find the same kind of situation. We're not going to we're not going to go over there and read that part, but there's a feeding of the 4,000. <laughs> Amen. Where you find a lot of the same stuff that happened. Amen. Jesus takes, how many does He take over there? Seven loaves and a few fishes. And He feeds. And He feeds the multitude mm -hmm. with it. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that little woman with that meal barrel and that cruise of oil. She didn't have but a little bit. And she told the prophet, and y'all know this, I wonder, I, I doubt very seriously she knew, or even the prophet knew, what an impact that account would have on the lives of people thousands of years later. I can't tell you the times I have grabbed a hold of that scripture. The fact that this little woman didn't have much. Matter of fact, all she had was a little. Amen? Mm -hmm. Elijah said unto her, uh, let me find it. 
Elijah's been up by the brook. The brook's dry. The ravens ain't bringing him no food. The Lord tells him, and it's in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, and the Lord tells him to get up and go to Zarephath. Because why? Because God had commanded a widow woman there to sustain him. Now wait a minute. If you'd had an eagle eye and could look down into her mill barrel and her cruise of oil, the Lord said He commanded a widow woman there to sustain Him. With what? That? That little piddly mess? When He gets there, the woman's out in the yard and she's gathering some sticks so she can go make a fire. And when He comes to the gate, this is verse 10 of the city, Behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel. And I know you've heard this before, but listen to it again. That I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And 17 and 12 says, And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel. Now, the barrel was big. Amen? The meal barrel was big. I don't know exactly the diameter of everything, but it was bigger than a handful. All right. In other words, if you look down in this barrel and you saw the handful of meal, you would have thought, that old woman's right. Her and her son fixing to starve death. That, ain't going, that may make one piece of litter bread. Amen? Come on. said, I don't have nothing but a handful of meal in a barrel yeah. and a little, somebody say little, well. a little all in a cruise, Brother Dave. Yeah. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. And you know what? She was right. If she'd have kept that in her hands, her and her son would have ate it and they would have died a painful death of starvation. But she makes a decision right here. Oh, my Lord and my God. She decides to take the little that she has and put it into the hands of the... Because in essence, that's what she was doing. Put it into the hands of the Lord. Amen? And see what He can do with it. Lord, I ain't got much meal. I ain't got hardly no oil left. But if you'll take it, if you'll take it, you can have it. Hallelujah. Oh me, I'm about to have a fit. Listen to this. And she said, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal barrel in a barrel, a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it, that me and my son may eat it and die. And she was right. If she'd have hung on to it, she would have died. But Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and thy servant. Now what she say she was going to do? She said she didn't have no cake. She just had a handful of meal and a little bit of oil. And she was going to go in and she was going to fix that. And they was going to eat it and they were going to die. More than likely, more than likely it took everything she had to make the little cake for Elijah. Yeah, real right. Yeah, true. So she goes... Y'all hold on. Hang on with me. I promise I'm closing here in a minute. She goes to the meal barrel and she gets it, dips out, scrapes it. She fixes the cake. She takes it to the prophet and says, here you go. And the prophet's eating it. And what did he tell her to do? He said, make me a cake first, bring it to me, and then make one for thee and for thy son. Mm -hmm. Make me a little cake first. Mm -hmm. right. Bring it to me and after. Yeah, the handful of me. And after. And after. Make for thee and thy son. Now listen, think about this. She goes and uses what meal she has. The meal barrel now is empty. Mm -hmm. But Elijah says that the Lord is saying unto you, if you'll do this, I will sustain you. So she goes and she makes the cake and she takes it to the prophet. Gives it to him. Now here's after. After she's done that, she's thinking, huh, now what are we going to do? I'll go look in that meal barrel, but I know 
I took what little there was. I took what little there was and I gave it to the prophet. But I will look. Woo! How? Oh, hallelujah! There's some meal in there! <laughs> There's some meal in there now! Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Why? Because she took what little she had out and she gave it to him! Hallelujah! If you take what you got, you may feel like you are a scraping bottom. But if you use what strength you have, if you use what you've got and give it to Him, He'll multiply it. Alright. He'll multiply it. Exactly. He'll multiply it. Absolutely. Let's see what happened. Elijah said, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. But make me therefore thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me. Yeah. And after it make for thee and for thy son, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel. The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and she did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house starved to death. Come on. Oh, wait a minute. That ain't what it says, is it? It might say it in your version out there. It don't say it in the Word of God, amen? And she and he and her house did eat yeah. many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake, which he spake by Elijah. Somebody said a little as much. Yeah. When God is in it. Amen. Amen. If we'll take it and put it in his hands. Come on. Little as much. Yeah. When God is in it. Yeah. How about Gideon? And his army. I'm not going to go over there, but I'll tell you a little bit about y'all know the y'all know it already. It's in Judges, the seventh chapter. Gideon had thirty-two thousand men. The Midianites had hundred and twenty thousand men. So you would already think, well, one hundred twenty thousand, thirty-two thousand. Forget yeah. it. It ain't going to be a good thing for. It ain't going to be no good turnout for Gideon. Amen. Yeah. But in verse three. He tells all of them that are scared to go home. Uh -huh. Amen? Right. And what happens? <clears throat> all of them leave but 10,000. Now, the Midianites have 120,000 men, and Gideon only has 10,000. Right. Because a bunch of them left. They were scared. Amen? They returned home. 22,000 of them left because they were afraid. <laughs> Amen? So he's down to 10,000. And you know what the Lord tells him? In verse 4, the people are yet too many. Mm -hmm. Now, Gideon, if he's in there like me, might have had a little thought that thought, oh, too many, huh? Yeah. I did have 32,000, now I got 10,000. There's still too many, huh? Okay. What do you want me to do, Lord? So the Lord tells him to take them all down to the creek to get a drink of water. And everyone that lappeth the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that bowed down upon his knee to drink, sent him to himself. And the number that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. So what's God telling them to do? Keep the 300 and send the rest of them home. 120,000 and God's got 300. Mm -hmm. Amen. Little as much when, when God, God is in it. Mm -hmm. Go over there and read it. Gideon didn't lose. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Gideon didn't lose. He put the battle. Oh, we could we need this this morning. Right. If you don't catch much of anything, we need to put the battle in God's hands. Amen. Amen. Truth. We spend all week beating our head against a brick wall. Amen. Right. We need to put the battle in God's hands. Amen. He said, now you're down to 300. Now rely on me. Yeah. Sometimes God's got to get us to scrape the bottom before we'll lean on yeah, him. There you go. Know. Sometimes until we get down to little, we think we can handle it by ourselves. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's almost as if we say, it's okay, God, I got this. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But when our back's to the world, when we're scraping the bottom, we say, oh, God. And he thinks it's about time. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Now watch me. Put it in my hands and watch me. Yeah. Little as much when God is in it. We could talk about David and Goliath today, but I guess that's all really i got to say is their names. Amen? Right. Big old Goliath and little bitty David. Amen? Yeah. His brothers were saying, David, he's too big. It won't matter. He's too, he's too big to hit. David looks at him and says, no, he's too big to miss. Amen? I'm going to lay one between his eyeballs. Hallelujah. God is with me. And when God is with you, little is much. Hallelujah. When God is with you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Take your little bit and put it in his hands and watch him use it. Amen. Watch you multiply it. Amen. Watch you make something yes. out of nothing. Mm -hmm. Amen. You may feel like you don't have nothing, that you ain't nothing, that you can be nothing. Yeah. If you go into some of the museums mm -hmm. and you look at these, these clay figures and these pots and things, some of them are priceless. Mm -hmm. Worth more money than a man can have to have. <clears throat> but in the beginning, all that pot was was a piece of clay in the hands of the potter. Amen. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and told him to go down to the potter's house. And he looked at the potter's house and the potter was making a work on the wheel. Yeah. And the vessel of the, the work was marred and the potter made it over again. The most priceless treasure, at least made from that kind of material, at one time was nothing more than a ball of mud in the hand of the potter. Oh, listen, and if it was in my hand today, it'd still be a ball of mud because I can't do nothing with it. I might be able to make a little brown snowman or something, but you put it in the hands of the potter. Right. And he can make something priceless out of it. Amen. Right. Oh, Oh, allow the potter to make something out of your little nothing. Amen. You say, I don't got nothing. God's wanting you to give him your nothing so that he can make something out of it. That's right, brother. I don't have nothing but a little. God's wanting to take your little and make a lot out of it. Amen. I'm closing. True. Little as much when God is in it. Amen. In the harvest field now ripened, there's a work for all to do. Hark, the voice of God is calling to the harvest, calling you. Yeah. Does the place you're called to labor seem small and little known? It is great if God is in it and he'll not forget his own. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh. Are you laid aside from service, body worn from toil and care? Yeah. You can still be in the battle in the sacred place of prayer. Amen. When the conflict here is ended and our race on earth is run, yeah. He will say if we are faithful, Welcome home, my child, well done. Amen. Little as much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, little as much when God is in it. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Little as much when God is in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. My, my, my. Thank you, I haven't felt this good all week. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Someone else this morning have something before we go.